And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. Today, my topic of my presentation is GORA adverbs. Here is the table of contents. First, I will give you a brief introduction of my topic. Then I show you my history design and some findings, uh, namely adverbs, modifying verbs, adjectives, and adverbs in GORA sentential adverbs in Gorwa, adverbs of place and time in Gorwa, and the different types of adverbs according to things classification in Gorwa. Then there are some special findings of adverbs in Gorwa from my study. Uh, last parts will be conclusion, references, and abbreviations. Then, um, a brief introduction. Um, this semester, I have first gotten known to Gora, a South Cushitic language spoken in Tanzania. However, it's a broad subject to, to me. So while I was suffering to find the sub-subject of Gora, Professor Harvard inspired me, and I finally chose Gora adverbs as my topic. And I discovered that GORA adverbs are really considered in various online catalogs. But by chance, I realized that Erex speakers could well comprehend many expressions in GORA. And Erex is also a South Cushitic language geography close to the GORA speaking community. And in the book, A Grammar of Erex, Martin Moose summarized the two major types of adverbs in Iraq, namely verbal adverbs and sentential adverbs. Some adverbs that can modify adjectives and other adverbs were also listed in his book. The Iraq adverbs mentioned in Moose examples are rich and easy to understand. So I borrowed some example to formulate my own questions. However, his types of adverbs seem to be too general. Therefore, after referring to Guglielmo Sink's classifications of adverbs in books, adverbs, and functional heads across linguistic perspective, I designed more questions. Um, besides, in our linguistic field research method, a seminar, I know the software Anna, and I find Anna is beneficial to transcript recordings, so I used it to transcript a sentence on Ingora spoken by Professor Hezekiah. Here is my question design. Uh, in the seminar, I designed three sections of questions. Um, the sixth one was conducted on 7th May. There were um, 25 questions. Those questions focus on adverbs, modifying verbs, adjectives, and adverbs, and also sentential adverbs and the different types of adverbs according to things classification. And the section two was conducted on um, 7th June. There were 26 languages. Um, those questions focus more on adverbs such as early, very, really, again, nearly, just, likely, and etc. Um, because um, those adverbs I also asked in section one, but I couldn't figure out those adverbs, so I asked more questions on those adverbs. And the section three was conducted on 6th of July. There were 25 questions. Those questions are focused on two on new aspects of adverbs, namely adverbs of place and adverbs of time. Because I think those aspects are also interesting and necessary to look at that. And at verbs of place, I ask some questions um, here, there, anywhere, and nearby. And at verbs of time um, may include 
yesterday, tomorrow, later, now, daily, weekly, and monthly. And after um, look at those examples and prescriptions, I found that um, the adverbs in Gora can modify verbs, adjectives, and also other adverbs. And here are some examples. Firstly, adverbs modifying verbs in Gorba. For instance, hala means almost or nearly. And halayan means he almost agreed. Here, hala modifying ya in this sentence. And hala appear just in front of the verb ya. And gadet ahalabut, which means the work is nearly finished. Um, in this sentence, hala means nearly, modifies the verb boot means be finished in this sentence. And the adverbs can also modify adjectives in, uh, in Gorba. For instance, valo means very. Fang valo means very good. Here, valo modifies the adjective fang mm, means good. And the valo appears behind the adjective quang. And adverbs modifying other adverbs in Gorba. Um, also another example, dikalo means maybe. Dikalo abini naha dikalo tomato. Here, this sentence means maybe today, maybe tomorrow. And dikalo means maybe, modifies abini and tomato in this sentence. It appears also in front of other adverbs abini and tomato. And there are many sentential adverbs in Goa. For example, gazi means nakni. Gazi aho aloha means nakni he got you. And gazi appears at the beginning of this sentence. Gazi al tattoo gazi al means nakni she saved herself. In this sentence, gazi appears um, nearly at the end of this sentence. And uh, there are also some adverbs of place and time in Gorwa. But because the section three, I only have 25 sentences to focus on adverbs of place and time. So I couldn't have uh, many findings of these aspects. And uh, here are some very simple findings. Firstly, adverbs of place in Gorba, we have a D, ni, and a D, ni to express here, there, anywhere, and nearby. And uh, as for adverbs of time in Gorba, I only can see some relations between nouns of time and adverbs of time in Gorba. Um, but because of the time and the space, I couldn't figure out those adverbs of time um, one by one. So it's still an open question for me. Maybe I will do it in the future study. And uh, there are different types of adverbs according to things classification in Gora. Namely, habitual adverbs, frequency adverbs, generative adverbs, degree adverbs, repetitive adverbs, prospective adverbs, speech act adverbs, epistemic adverbs, evaluative adverbs, retrospective adverbs, and proximative adverbs. In the following parts, I will show some 
um, conclusion and findings of those types of adverbs according to sync classification. Um, first, any hector adverbs. For instance, toma means usually, and hikatoma datil means I usually get up early, and doma means hectorly. And, and then he doma that hill means a heptony get up early. And we also have frequency adverbs. For example, oma means always. And he oma that hill means I always get up early. Generative adverbs in Gorwa, for instance, he means early. Madahio a de hikadon. I get up early in the morning. And hikato auch kia. I go to bed early at night. And the degree adverbs on valo, we have already known it before. Um, kwang valo. And here we have nans valo means. Thank you very much. And the ak means too. Akta means too much. And also repetitive adverbs. Um, mane, mana means again or more. The ani a mana a has also means let me hear it just once again. And the za ani a mana. Ahas, let me hear it just once more. Prospective adverbs, um, hana means almost or nearly. Ahala di hisatit means he nearly give up. And the speech act adverbs, huang sante means frankly speaking. Nui ma huang sante anu. Means frankly speaking, it is true. And epistemic adverbs, decalo, um, means maybe and also can express probably. In this sentence, Tom decalo and dimi ao higna. Has Tom probably been here before? And evaluative adverbs, lahati, means surprisingly. Hala means hopefully. Nahati Hwansante English Ale Hiha means surprisingly he cannot speak English. Hala aloko ahai means hopefully he got me. And the retrospective adverbs in express trust. Gadia inna asput means the work is just finished. And Gadia inna he is means he has just finished the work. Proximative adverbs hinti hinti means soon. Niwa aman tong hinti hinti. He is coming home soon. Nakus agahi sa hinti hinti. He soon realized the mistake. And after um, that, I also have some special findings of adverbs in Gorwa. Firstly, um, the general positions of adverbs in Gorwa, as my observation, there are five types. First, when adverb modifies a verb, um, the adverb is placed before the verb. And when an adverb modifies an adjective, the adverb comes after the adjective. And when an adverb modifies another adverb, the adverb is also placed before the um, another adverb. And the sentential adverbs in Gorwa usually appear at the beginning of a Gorwa sentence. 
and many adverbs can also be directly put at the end of a sentence. And some different adverbs can be used as synonyms. Here are some examples. And halasi means he almost disagreed. And the simana iglaha also means he almost disagreed. Here, hala and the mana iglaha can both express almost with some negative meanings in this sentence. And one adverb might contain another adverb. Um, for example, again in Gorwa is transcripted as mana, which seems to be encompassed in mana iglaha means almost with negative meanings. And uh, this situation can be also seen in um, another language namely Iraq. And some special adverbs do not occur in Gorwa, such as adverbs with meanings of already and really. For our people may simply omit these kinds of meanings for convenience, or they can repeat verbs and adjectives for emphasis. Um, when a people want to, when a person want to say it is really true in Gorwa, then he can say anui or anui nuimo. And in conclusion, from my study. Adverbs can modify verbs, adjectives, and adverbs in Gorwa. And there exist sentential adverbs and adverbs of place and time in Gorwa. However, the adverbs of place seem not to be rich in Gorwa. I summarize different types of adverbs according to Sink's classification in Gorwa. I also give my remarkable findings of adverbs in Gorwa, namely the general positions of adverbs, the situation of different adverbs as synonyms, the case of one adverb containing another, and the occurrences of repeating words instead of using adverbs. And also in my study, I have faced many challenges and difficulties. Firstly, because Gorwa is a quite new um, Cushitic language for me, so I cannot translate um, Gorwa sentences into English word by word. And also because of this reason and the short time to know Gorwa, I couldn't mark tone in my transcription, but I know there are many tone. So I try to um, yeah, imitate his Akiya's pronunciation. And um, because of the small number of questions on place and time at work, so I do not have a lot of specific findings use aspects. Um, yeah, maybe I can make up to those next and do more researches um, in my future. Yeah. And here are some references and abbreviations. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Nan. I really appreciate these findings because adverbs were kind of a topic that I never really looked at carefully in Gorwa in my own research. And some of these forms that you're coming across really make me sort of scratch my head and say, I need to check these and uh, and go back and see if I hear them in my recordings. So it's a really it's a really great contribution, and I really appreciate you um, going into it and uh, looking at it. Uh, before I go on anymore, uh, do we have any specific questions from the room or from uh, our colleagues here? Oh, Raël, I have. A comment or a suggestion. Sure. Yeah, because um, Nan on slide nine, um, I think. Check. Yeah, uh, you were asking for. Yeah, you were mentioning uh, adverbs of 
time and you weren't able to find many. So I thought about either my own recordings or some other point in the course, if we had any. And so I remember that in the very first elicitation session, which was just a random one, it was on the 26th of April, uh, some of us asked questions about time. So maybe in that recording, you might find something else. Uh, because I remember it was questions like, at what time do you do something or uh, time of the day or some other questions related to that. So maybe you can find something else there. Yes. Um, yeah. And then I already told Nan uh, when we had our uh, discussion session, but in my own elicitation sessions, um, I only tried to ask once or twice about, I asked in the morning and then in the evening or something like that. And I remember that Hezekiah simply didn't reply. So he just skipped that part as if it was like a setting or something like it's irrelevant. It was irrelevant in the end, uh, except for the fact that I was looking for something like over time, right? So to refer to things over time. Uh, but he simply didn't translate those. He translated the, the other sentences. So I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have any any of these examples to give you. But great presentation, Anne. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and speaking of sort of uh, other, like looking in other people's recordings, I'm sure that Rahat probably has some interesting stuff as well because he was working on time and place. So if we if we think about ever uh, continuing our research, these might be useful little places to look. Um, I like Raelle's observation though, when you're doing a licitation that's based on one topic, the consultant may actually clue into the fact that, okay, we're looking for this one thing here. So everything else is unimportant. So they might sort of filter these things out. Do we have any other questions or comments from the room at all? Yes, Prof Zomer. Yeah, thank you very much, Emily. It's exciting. Took them to the Borla grammar and vocabulary and um, adverbs. And I knew that there is such a lot of distinctions to be made. Thank you for also giving me an insight into this. And in another class on this, in this case, we talked about um, idiophones as typical categories or a typical category for many of the languages. Well, in that, it's probably also the the region. And I encountered two instances in your presentation. In Tinti, we mean where a duplicated form turns. Uh, so I can imagine that there's more to get into, and uh, I thank you very much for um, taking this particular topic, which is not necessarily in the old pattern, I would say, grammatical uh, analysis in more narrow sense, but me as a sociologist, I'm always excited if there are things coming up that go beyond structure or, or patterns or grammatical categories. This is not a question, but a comment. Um, and uh, what is an album, what is an interjection, what is an idiot for? I mean, these are another three big questions. And uh, very interesting to see that there are hints or first ideas in, in your data. Thank you. And it's, and it's really true, Nan. I mean, like with working with adverbs, we sort of tread this line between exactly what you said. I mean, what is an adverb? And then when do you start going into things that are not adverbs? And it becomes complex and, and very interesting. So yeah, I just wanted to say again, before we finish, I really appreciate you taking this topic. And I think that the contribution is very uh, valuable. So um, well done. And uh, thank you again.